Hello, I'm Pastor Burke, and this is the St. Helena United Methodist Church. It is March, March the 13th. We're in the second Sunday of Lent, and I am reading from the book of John. That is our Lenten reflection for this Lenten season, 2022. I'm reading a chapter every two days and recording them, putting them on our YouTube page, but I'm also encouraging everyone else that would like to, to read a chapter themselves every couple of days. This will take us through, because John has 21 chapters, into the middle of Holy Week if we follow this through, and I'm hoping you do, because there's a lot to reflect upon and consider in John. John is the most Christologically centered of all the Gospels. Jesus is fully the Christ in John, whereas in the other Gospels, he's working his way in that direction, perhaps. Uh, but in John, it's realized from the beginning of who he is, the Son, uh, a part of God brought into creation for us to marvel at, learn from, and be transformed by. So we're now on chapter 6. Jesus is about to have the wonderful um, miracle of the loaves and fishes that he'll share with his disciples and the crowd of 5,000 that have come to hear him near Lake Tiberias in ancient Israel. Okay, chapter 6, the Gospel of John. Sometime later, Jesus crossed over to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, that is Lake Tiberias, and a huge crowd followed him, impressed by the signs he gave when he was healing sick people. Jesus climbed the hillside and sat down there with the disciples. It was shortly before the Jewish feast of Passover. Looking up, Jesus saw the crowd approaching and said to Philip, Where can we buy some bread for these people to eat? Jesus knew very well what he was going to do, but he wanted to see what Philip's response would be. Philip answered, Not even with 200 days' wages would we be able to purchase enough bread to give all of these people even a mouthful? One of the disciples, Simon Peter's brother, Andrew, said, there's a small boy here with five barley loaves and a few small dried fish. But what good is that for so many people? Jesus said to them, make the people sit down. There was plenty of grass there and as many as 5,000 families sat down. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and gave them out to all who were sitting there. He did the same with the fish, giving out as much as they could eat. When the people had eaten their fill, Jesus said to the disciples, gather up the leftover pieces so that nothing gets wasted. So they picked them up and filled 12 baskets with the scraps left over from the five barley loaves. The people, seeing this sign that Jesus had performed, said, Surely this is the prophet who has come into the world. Seeing that they were about to come and carry him off to crown him king, Jesus escaped into the hills alone. As evening approached, the disciples were, went down to the lake. They got into their boat, intending to cross to Capernaum, which was on the other side of the lake. By this time it was dark, and Jesus had still not joined them. Moreover, a stiff wind was blowing, and the sea was becoming rough. When they had rowed three or four miles, they caught sight of Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water. They were frightened, but he told them, It's me. Don't be afraid. They were about to take him into the boat, but suddenly the boat was ashore at their destination. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the other side of the lake saw that the only boat had been there, that only one boat had been there, and they knew that Jesus had not gotten into the boat with the disciples, that the disciples had set off by themselves. Other boats, however, had, put, had been put in from Tiberias, near the place where the bread had been eaten, after the rabbi had given thanks. When the people saw that neither Jesus nor the disciples were there, they got into those boats and crossed to Capernaum, looking for Jesus. When they found Jesus on the other side of the lake, they said, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them, The truth of the matter is, you're not looking for me because you've seen signs, but because you've eaten your fill of the bread. You shouldn't be working for perishable food, but for life-giving food that lasts for all eternity. This the Chosen One can give you, 
For the chosen one bears the seal of Abba, God. Abba is the name of Father. At this they said, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus replied, This is the work of God, to believe in the one whom God has sent. So they asked Jesus, What sign are you going to give to show us that we should believe in you? What will you do? Our ancestors had manna to eat in the desert. As the scripture says, God gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, The truth of the matter is, Moses hasn't given you bread from heaven, yet my Abba gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Teacher, they said, give us this bread from now on. Jesus explained to them, I am the bread of life. No one who comes to me will ever be hungry. No one who believes in me will be thirsty. But as I told you, you see me and still don't believe. Everyone Abba God gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I won't turn away. For I have come from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. It is the will of the one who sent me that I lose none of those given to me, but rather raise them up on the last day. Indeed, this is the will of my Abba, that everyone who sees and believes in the only begotten will have eternal life. These are the ones I will raise up on the last day. The temple authorities started to grumble and protest because Jesus claimed, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They kept saying, isn't this Jesus begot of Mary and Joseph? Don't we know his mother and father? How can he claim to have come down from heaven? Stop your grumbling, Jesus told them. No one can come to me unless drawn by Abba God who sent me, and those I will raise up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard God's word and has learned from it comes to me. Not that anyone has seen Abba God, only the one who is from God has seen Abba God. The truth of the matter is, those who believe have eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, and if you eat it, you'll never die. I myself am the living bread, come down from heaven. If any eat this bread, they will live forever. The bread I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The temple authorities then began to argue with one another. How can he give us his flesh to eat? Jesus replied, The truth of the matter is, if you don't eat the flesh and drink the spirit of the chosen one, you won't have life in you. Those who do eat my flesh and drink my spirit have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day, for my flesh is real food and my spirit is real drink. Everyone who eats my flesh and drinks my spirit lives in me, and I live in them. Just as the living Abba God sent me, and I have life because of Abba God, so those who feed on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that comes down from heaven. It's not the kind of bread your ancestors ate, for they died. Whoever eats this kind of bread will live forever. Jesus spoke these words while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. Many of his disciples remarked, We can't put up with this kind of talk. How can anyone take it seriously? Jesus was fully aware that the disciples were murmuring and protest at what he said. Is this a stumbling block for you? He asked them. What then if you were to see the Chosen One ascend to where the Chosen One came from? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh in itself is useless. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Yet among you there are some who don't believe. Jesus knew from the start, of course, those who would refuse to believe and the one who would betray him. He went on to say, This is why I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by Abba God. From this time on, Many of the disciples broke away and wouldn't remain in the company of Jesus. Jesus then said to the twelve, Are you going to leave me too? Simon Peter answered, Rabbi, where would we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe. We're convinced that you are the Holy One of God. 
Then Jesus replied, Haven't I chosen you twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. Jesus meant that one of the twelve, Judas, begot of Simon Iscariot, was going to betray him. Whew. John pulls no punches. And you might find yourself resonating with this very deeply. And you might find yourself having a lot of questions. Or you might find yourself saying, it's too much. You might actually agree with some of the disciples who say, we can't put up with this kind of talk. How can anyone take it seriously? That's how it works with scripture. It is meant to challenge us, to get us to ask questions ourselves, not to just take it as being either literal truth or God's word without any comment from us. God created us to build and create and engage with this world on a smaller scale than God and Christ, but nonetheless, we are here to think, to act, to reflect, to pray, to wonder, and at times to be confused and not have an answer. So may this scripture help you in that process. You don't have to agree with it, but you don't have to reject it either. There are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in your philosophy, Horatio, said by another scriptural writer long afterwards. Blessings to you, and we'll come back with chapter 7 in a day or so. Bye for now.